Hello, sir. Can you uh, share your screen so that we can check whether you are able to share your screen? Yeah. So please tell me, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are completely audible. Okay. हेलो हेलो सो आई एम शेयरिंग माय स्क्रीन हेलो अभिषेक सर यस सर सर बिफोर स्टार्टिंग मिस्टर मृत्युंजय वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू विद आर ऑडियंस टू आर ऑडियंसेस सो मृत्युंजय सो माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल यस सर योर स्क्रीन इज हाय यस सर ये यस आई एम सर इट इज विजिबल ओके हेलो 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 एम आई ऑडिबल सर Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. you are right. okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Uh, good afternoon, friends, colleagues, and faculty members who gathered here for today's webinar on frequency selective surfaces, filtering, and beyond, which will be delivered to us by Dr. Ayan Chatterjee, sir. A brief introduction about sir. Uh, he received his PhD in microwave engineering from IIST Shibpur in 2018. presently he is associated with electronics and communication department in nit sikkim he has authored more than 30 papers in national and international proceedings his research interests include fss artificial magnetic conductor slot antennas for wideband applications he has also received senior research fellowship from csir in 2014 he is also associated with institute of engineers fossed and few others he is a senior member of ursi and a member of ieee 
I, uh, I would now request Dr. Ayan Chatterjee, sir, to take control of this webinar and provide us with some great insights into FSS. Over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for such a nice introduction. And uh, as uh, you have already mentioned that I am associated with NITC Kim as well as IEEE and RC. And this topic, uh, if my screen is visible, let me make it full screen. So, so I'm very much thankful to IEEE-DM, the uh, IEEE student chapter. The student chapter activities are growing day by day. Uh, and that's really appreciable. In this uh, scenario also, you are uh, going through such webinars, organizing such uh, events so that we can be connected uh, and uh, we, we can be get updated with the latest technologies. Uh, so, is it the full screen is visible? Uh, actually, sir, the okay. like, uh, your slides are not visible, sir. Only Hold the folder. Is, uh, we can see only the uh, lecture folder. Okay. Now, now it is visible. No, sir. Sir, you have to uh, what share. You can, uh, uh, sir, you have to share different screen. Uh, from uh, share screen option, you will you can choose the other screen where the PPT has been opened. From there, you have to choose. Okay, it. I think I, I think that uh, screen is not uh, visible here. Wait. Yes, sir. Now it's visible. Okay. The, I've done this full screen. So the full screen is visible. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Actually, I'm more into Google Meet and less uh, using this Zoom anyway. Uh, so the topic, as you can see, that is frequency selective surfaces, uh, filtering and beyond. So this frequency selective surface, it's uh, not a very new topic, but this frequency selective surface, the application part is the uh, actually being uh, investigated as well as being implemented in various fields. So I will be going through the application part mostly. And uh, if some of you are being or not being aware of this particular topic, that is this particular surface. So that is why I will be briefing on the surface and then I'll be going through the application part. So that application part is the most important one. And okay, so let's start. So before that, uh, starting of this presentation, just let me know that uh, whether you are comfortable with only presentation or sometimes I can go through some uh, pen work or like this, you know, it's a pen and paper kind of thing. But it's okay Hello. with that also. You can, uh, you can go with pen and paper also. Okay. So this frequency electric surface is basically kind of wireless filter, uh, which we have, you have studied, all of you have started generally studying in the very beginning of BJ, that is UG courses, any subjects like uh, network analysis and synthesis, the, or circuit theory, as we say, analog electronics. There we study this term filter. 
and filters as you know that in rf circuits in the low frequency as well as high frequency applications this filter is a very fundamental and useful component which can which can be used to mitigate the noise performance in the circuit or mostly it is used to selectively use some frequency band or a particular resonating frequency which can be passed through the filter in the circuit in the towards the output or which can be blocked. and it's also very much used in the uh, in the case of radio receivers as you know the super heterogeneous receiver so everywhere you can see certain kind of rf filters so this fss is uh, it can be related to this filter that means a filter for rf circuits but mostly we say that it's a wireless filter now the question is why it's wireless filter because if you see it's a periodic structure and if you concentrate on the middle one that means the figure here that is a periodic array of some elements and these all elements are uh, you can say made of metal which is also visible in the third one that means the figure 3 here this metal sections are fabricated on a dielectric substrate you know pcb fabrication printed circuit board so that pcb fabrication mechanism you can use here, uh, either to photolithographic process or anything else uh, and it can also be home made but we need a substrate and all, above that we can arrange some periodic structure a periodic units, periodic uh, array of some unit cells but the unit cells should be made of some material that is copper aluminum gold kind of things mostly we use copper you know that uh, conductivity is adequate as well as uh, there are a lot more advantages and uh, sometimes gold is also used so as you can see that uh, structure is basically the array of patches array of metallic cells and it can also be array of apertures apertures means just in place of metal you can place the aperture or hole and on the other sections you can place some material that means metal or copper or aluminum whatever so just the complementary structure both are possible and mostly these are used for uh, getting the response of band pass filter or band stop filter uh, or you can also use these structures to get the low pass as well as high pass response high pass filter response but why the name is a wireless because it's a wireless counterpart counterpart of the filters that means you do not have to connect any wire as you connect in the rf circuits rather you can just put this uh, structure in in the in front of any window in your uh, you know uh, in the window curtains or you can place them in front of antenna we do not have to connect it to the antenna you do not have to connect it to some power supply it can just uh, work in its own structure and and obviously the very basic definition of filter that is uh, it either it will pass a certain frequency where all other frequencies will be blocked or it will uh, stop a certain frequency where all other frequencies will be passed so similar kind of mechanism can be achieved here but it is mostly used for high frequency uh, applications such as beyond gigahertz or you can say beyond uh, some 900 or uh, 1800 megahertz where from the mobile communication actually starts In, in this slide you can see a very basic uh, dipole antenna which all of you uh, are familiar with i think you have studied electromagnetics or antenna basics so this dipole antenna as as you can see it's radiating the electric fields the magnetic field parts are not shown here but uh, all of you know that magnetic field will be perpendicular to the electric field now if you place a uh, fss that means this frequency electric structure or the periodic array in front of the antenna or at some at some distance from the antenna then what happens is mostly this electric field as well as the magnetic field that are shown in this figure will be impinging on the surface when it impinges on the surface then uh, if you think of the loop of the magnetic field then it will insert some current on the structure that mean on the metal and the electric field will be mostly excited in between the two unit cells that means from one unit cell to the other unit cell the single uh, unit cells you can see here all are of same shape and dimensions so if you take two consecutive unit cells then the electric field will be impinging on the on on in between the two unit cells and the magnetic field will in, induce some current in the unit cells that means in the metal that means the electrons will oscillate from uh, giving uh, some uh, getting some energy from the magnetic field so the electromagnetic wave is basically energizing or uh, you know resonating the structure but it is not like the electrons will be oscillating at any frequency if you impinge some frequency 
uh, which for which the cell or unit cell is made of, then only it will resonate. Such as for example, you can see uh, these are known as dipole shaped unit cells. So if you consider on the dipole shaped units, then here we have a dipole of length lambda g by two. Now lambda g is basically the guided wavelength. You can get the concept of guided wavelength from waveguides. So it's related to the substrate, which is having some dielectric constant. If you know the dielectric constant, you know that uh, this uh, guided wavelength. So basically it will, what it will do is when the electric field and magnetic field will impinge on the surface, it will resonate and it will resonate or with maximum current when the frequency will be compatible to the length of this structure. That means if this uh, length, uh, this uh, lambda by two is chosen for a frequency of 7.5 gigahertz, then for that particular frequency only, it will resonate maximum. For other frequencies, it will resonate less. So for that frequency, it will be acting like a band stop filter. Why? Because the dipole will act uh, for as inductor. You can see here the inductor is shown, that is L, and the capacitor will be formed because of this electric field in between the two unit cells. So this LC series circuit is uh, formed and it's a very basic circuit for a filter. I'm not going for the higher order filters. Just uh, let us uh, talk about a very uh, fast filter filter that is a LC series band stop filter. So it will act like that. Similarly, you, you can get the transmission reflection response. So in the transmission response, that is the red one, you can see the transmission is minimum at the 7.5 gigahertz. And at the same frequency, the reflection is maximum that is around zero dB. And we always express them in decibels. Uh, you know some advantages uh, are they are in expressing this such responses or characteristics in decibel unit. And uh, we always measure the bandwidth of a filter with respect to 3 dB reference level, but here you can sometimes uh, refer it uh, for 10 to minus 10 dB reference. And here you can see as usual, obviously the 7.5 gigahertz signal will be reflected back because it is acting like a band stop filter. Uh, with the maximum oscillation of the electrons and the three gigahertz signal, suppose three gigahertz or four gigahertz, this frequencies, the transmission response is uh, not that bad, rather it is close to zero dB from the response you can see, so it will pass. So either it will pass the frequencies or it will block. So it's depend on, depending on which frequency uh, you are choosing or for which frequency you are designing your surface. So that's the most important thing. And you can choose different element shapes, but I'm taking dipole, uh, as I told you, maybe uh, some of you are not aware of this particular structure. So I'm, I'm choosing this particular, this very simple one. Yes, anyone? Yes, anyone is trying to say something? I think uh, someone has not uh, uh, switched off its, his mic, uh, I guess. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so, uh, we can move on and here you can see uh, in this slide, we have a different shape of the unit cell. Basically, why do we choose different shape of unit cells and what are the different advantages or disadvantages of choosing different shape of the unit cells? That you can get from some reference that I will give you. Also, I will show you some kind of uh, in the tabular format you can see. But this is a cross dipole and the advantage is, you know, uh, if you are using a dipole, as we saw, as we saw in the previous slides, then the electric field should be parallel to the dipole. That means the strip, metallic strip. But if the electric field is perpendicular to that strip, then the, the the particular structure won't work. Now, if you want the structure to work for both the vertical and horizontal electric fields, that means whether the electric field is vertical to the structure or the electric field is horizontal to the structure. If you want that kind of advantage, then you can use two dipole strips perpendicular to each other. That is nothing but a cross. So it can be a cross dipole. That is, that is what is known as. And uh, similarly, a complementary structure will give you the band pass response. As in the response also, you can see just its complementary structure. Transmission response is now close to zero dB at the same frequency, 7.5 gigahertz. And uh, similarly, lambda by two will be the resonating length for the structure. But uh, from my experience, I, what I have seen, that is whenever you are choosing the gap between the unit cells, then it should be as small as possible because you know the gap is deciding the capacitance. So if you increase the gap, then it will increase the overall area and as well as it will affect the capacitance and, uh, the, and then the frequency will also be affected. 
So this structure is known as polarization insensitive because as you can see, the electric field may be horizontal or vertical to the structure. But it's not uh, sensitive to the circular polarization. Circular polarized signals, if you have heard about circular polarized signals, if you uh, think about them, then this structure is not that much okay for that. So it's a simulation uh, model. Uh, so in the simulation model, you can see, sir, uh, excuse me. So tell me one thing that, are you, uh, can you uh, see the full screen or some something is coming on the top? So we can see full screen. If it is. Okay. So that's, pro that's uh, the problem here only. Anyway, no problem. So, here uh, we can have this uh, simulation model. You can use any high frequency st structure simulator, any high frequency simulator, like you can use HFSS. HFSS, you have, I think probably you have heard about that is uh, frequently used. Then CST, that is computer simulation technology. HFSS stands for high frequency structure simulator, or you can use FACO. Basically they are uh, using different solvers, such as time domain solver, frequency domain solver. So different solvers are being used. That is why the obviously the results may differ a little bit, but not much. They should not differ much, but you can compare with different simulators. But uh, mostly these simulators are used for high frequency applications. So if you are you designing your surface or your structure for some gigahertz frequency range, then it's uh, good for use, to use these uh, simulators. So basically you have to take a unit cell not the whole structure. You can just design unit cell and then you can give some boundaries like perfect T and perfect H as you can see here. And the electric field you have to define in a particular direction as here you can see the electric field direction is defined. You can also give the electric field uh, just uh, normal to this in the shown here. That is also, that then also it will work. But remember, we have to define uh, the boundaries that are most important. If you do not define the boundary, then it will not it will not repeat the structure. The, re the repeated repetition or the video itself will not be uh, composed. Now, uh, why these uh, boundaries are defined? I can give you an example, such as this perfect T boundary. It's nothing but when you define a perfect T boundary, then in that boundary, the electric field is vertical to the structure. The electric field is never horizontal. The tangential component of electric field is zero if you define a perfect field. So it is basically kind of metal. And then it will be like if you place two mirrors opposite to each other, and if you stand in between the two mirrors and look at the mirror, then it will be like your uh, thousands of images are getting formed. So it's just like that. You have probably seen in uh, some science city museum. So the, it's just kind of that. So what will happen is it will it will create just the image of same unit cells in all the directions. So in every direction, it will create the images and the periodic array will form and infinite periodic array will be created in this particular structure. And then you can simulate and get the response. And the most important part is the measurement because you know after simulation also you may not be sure though this this these simulators uh, these softwares whatever we I told you uh, it takes around ten years to twelve years to completely uh, complete the codes then they go for some higher versions so obviously the simulators are you can trust them but you have to uh, go for the measurement at the end so you fabricate the structure just like you fabricate your PCB as I told you using the photolithography process you can go for that. Uh, if you do not, if you are not available with the UV rays, then also no problem. There is some kind of uh, mechanism you can go for YouTube, they will show you. So that is, you know, you can perform in uh, your laboratory also, if, even if you do not have much equipment. Sometimes we did it because we, do, we didn't have uh, UV ray exposure some in, uh, in, in the beginning. Later on, we got them. So here you can see the structure is fabricated for a large Array that we, it is kind of 20 by 20 unit cells are there. But uh, the antennas you need, they here we are using the horn antenna. We may use different antennas, but horn antenna, its advantage is you know it's wide band and the gain of the antenna is uh, kind of stable throughout the band. That is why it is it is okay to it is good to use the horn antennas. Then we can use some source. Here we are using some uh, simple source for the horn antenna that is biasing the horn. Mm, or uh, here you can see some uh, 
microwave oscillator is there. Instead of that, you can also use VNA, that is vector network analyzer, that are mostly available in uh, most of the institutions. Uh, maybe 10 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz or 40 gigahertz VNA uh, vector network analyzer. So that can also be used as a microwave source or source of these uh, high frequency signals. And at the end, you need to have a power meter. The power meter should have a power sensor. You can see here, there is a power sensor. If you do not have the power sensor, then you can see the spectrum. You know, the spectrum that is frequency spectrum, that also you can see. Uh, otherwise, if you have the power sensor, then you can directly you, you get the power. And the power is mostly, uh, you know, as uh, it is read in dBm. That is, then you can convert it to dB or even without converting, you can plot the graph. Then, uh, and one more thing regarding the measurement, uh, I can tell you that whenever, suppose if you are going to going for the measurement, then you can keep a far field, you can keep this FSS at the far field of the antenna, that is, you know, two D squared by lambda. So if you keep it, then there will be uh, less error in the measurement. And these are the power years you can, uh, you can consider on the, year of invention that is around 1974, 1980, 1960. So it's, as I told you, the FSS itself is not very new, but the applications are getting changed divided. So uh, without going much in detail, we can go for the applications. These are the different unit cells. As I told you, you can choose the unit cell depending on your uh, necessity, your need, like you, whether you need a narrow band application, you need for the wide band application, or you need some polarization sensitivity or polarization insensitive or maybe you need uh, multiple advantages in one unit cell, then you can have the hybrid elements, that is the last one. So, uh, but there is some disadvantage also as, as I, have, uh, I have, when I have simulated the structures, I have gone through this problem that if you are using the solid plate type elements, then you can have the rating low problem that uh, generally comes for this type of unit cells. So even if you are using them, then also we have to minimize, you have to restrict the use of this type of unit cells. And uh, then one thing is like, why do we always choose um, metal dielectric metal structure? Metal dielectric metal means, suppose you are, you have two layers of FSS and in, in, in between there is a dielectric. So why do we always choose a metal dielectric metal structure, not a dielectric metal dielectric structure? Very simply, we can say that uh, the event scan field that actually diminishes within a very short distance from the source, that actually is longer for the dielectric metal dielectric structure. So it's better to go for the metal dielectric metal structure uh, or metal dielectric structure. These are typical applications. These applications are being uh, implemented uh, since many years, such as it's all it's used for the sub reflector in the Cassegrain green antenna that is uh, not very new, but the applications in case of radome that is uh, being used nowadays uh, frequently to see a weather department then in the top or rooftop of the weather department, they have a weather radar. And the weather radar, that antenna is covered with some radome. That is basically saving it, uh, the antenna or the equipment from the environmental you know, hazards like uh, rainfall or storms, thunderstorms. And also it's saving it from being detected by the enemy radars. If the enemy radars are trying to detect your this, uh, kind, this antenna or the equipment, then it will save it. How? Uh, if the radar is sending some signal, the wideband signal to this equipment to detect it, then it will basically, what it will do is it will scatter the signals in all the directions so that the signal going towards the radar is very weak. So what will happen is the signal towards the radar is very weak, then it will not be able to detect that. Then uh, another thing is it, it will also reduce the radar cross section as well as the frequency for which the antenna is working, that frequency can penetrate it and it will work. So only that frequency is allowed. So that is the radom, uh, that is what radom is. And a very present and a very, you know, uh, recent application is you, you can cover the whole building uh, with FSS. If, if you need a very, very secure communication, that means you want the signals inside your office not to go outside, uh, and also you want only the mobile phone signals or mobile communication signals, that's 800, 900 or 2000 megahertz that to come inside, then you can cover it with FSS or metal glass seats so that it will only allow 
the desired signals to pass in or come out but it will not allow the inside signals in uh, for the indoor communications the signals to go outside so it's very secure but it is costly so it's actually used in japan this nippon uh, one manufacturing companies they are nippon they actually have built it then you can place the fss in the nose of some aircraft these are used for defense applications so whenever you have some antenna in the nose of some aircraft used for military applications or you know uh, even if in the air force it's used so they uh, cover it with that cover you can see here it's not visible the fss is not visible but it's actually having some frequency selective arrangement so that the signals the radar signals cannot uh, reach there then uh, very you know, popular application is micro oven you have um, all, um, many of uh, us are having micro oven in our uh, home and uh, we if, if you concentrate on window then you see there is some grid kind of arrangement that is basically allowing the visible spectrum to pass in and out that means you can see the food is getting cooked but the 2.45 gigahertz signal that is basically uh, cooking the food uh, that will not come out otherwise it could have a, a great loss so that is what i was discussing the micro oven then there can be uh, application to stop the interference uh as application part can be uh, divided in two parts one is filtering and another is filtering so filtering is basically as i told you if there is some mobile phone tower and the signals are reaching everywhere because that signal is wired is passing is it's communicating passing rating through wireless communication so the signal can go everywhere and the users are the user mobile phones or the cell phones are getting those signals they are desired one but suppose the you, you want to restrict the signal that means you want to restrict the power of the signal uh, which for the buildings which are very close to the antenna the cell tower antenna where the radiation is very huge so there if you want to restrict the power you can use this fss so that is kind of filtering uh, as well as you can use for medical telemetry that i will come to uh, that is where you can send uh, some some data like your heartbeat your pulse rate your blood sugar for the elderly patients to some remote location and this uh, the, far, the the top figure that is very popular that is all covering all the applications in the spectrum the rf spectrum so this one is uh, what i was talking about that is you can cover your uh, window or curtains in the curtains you can uh, place some fss uh, structure so that the cell phone tower radiation which is reaching your your room uh, suppose where the distance is only approximately 10 meters this is uh, in new delhi so there you can see the distance is only 10 meters and the, uh, the cell tower radiation on the range of some kilowatt okay you can refer to the report by professor girish kumar of iit bombay so he has mentioned these things in detail in his report and he has worked hard really throughout many years so there you can refer it and uh, the the bedroom if there is some elderly person or the children especially they suffer from this uh, kind of radiation and the, this the thermographic image of the brain you can see here the specific absorption rate is very high and this actually this red zone is in in, in some 50 to 300 meter uh, after that their problem is very less but if the buildings are there so what you can do is you can place some fss structure as you can see the design the unit cell design so it's a very simple design it's even sometimes you see this particular design in the you know this in the grills of the windows so there you can put put this design with the specific dimensions as mentioned here yes okay so there you can place it and you can see that this is not blocking your mobile phone signals it's not blocking the signals that is going from your mobile phone that is having roughly 1 watt or 2 watt of power so there it is transmitting there it is transparent but it is reducing the power level in the downlink frequency downlink means the signal that is coming from the cell tower towards your mobile phone so that frequency signal the power level is getting reduced by the fss and with the design uh, the dimensions you can change this reduction in power level but the signal that is going from your mobile phone towards the cell phone tower that will not change that will not change much because you can see the uplink frequency this uh, see the power is not getting changed or the transmission level is not changed so this is very uh, important this can be an important application and also you can change the unit cell dimension 
then uh, we can go for some applications beyond filtering like uh, you know uh, we have uh, different kind we have we are coming across different uh, kind of challenges in the uh, antenna field antenna engineering when we are designing some antenna maybe some monopolar dipole antenna simple antenna or maybe some array antenna that are used for you know applications like satellite communication so if you are considering satellite communication you know satellite uh, this ground station is sending some data to satellite and the satellite is sending back to the data to ground station so this kind of and uh, in this kind of uh, and, uh, arrangement or communication sometimes we use this array antenna in the array antenna the problem is for every antenna element we have some low noise amplifier and we have some bandpass filter with some kind of filter arrangement that is bpf bandpass filter so for every element if you have if you need to have some bandpass filter instead of that what we can do we can minimize this uh, whole structure by mini by removing all the bandpass filters and by placing one fss above the antennas which can work as a it can work as a bandpass filter uh, in the multi band single band wide band whatever you want but you do not have to put all the bandpass filters separately for every antenna element so that is one very uh, you know good advantage because it is reducing your cell size so in satellite that is very important because in satellite you know it's 36000 km apart and inside the satellite you do not have much space so that you can put all these things then we can also find the applications in the field of array and in the field of uh, you know array antenna that are used in portable devices or the microstrip antennas where the uh, radiation uh, radiation hazards are there so you can minimize them using this fss structure mutual coupling in array antenna can be reduced because you know if you are using array antenna then this antenna elements the individual elements are placed very close to each other even sometimes less than lambda by 2 distance so then there will be mutual coupling in between the two antenna elements due to the electric fields so if that happens then you can you can put some kind of fss elements in between the antenna elements so that if this uh, particular mutual coupling can be reduced and also if you are using some wide band antenna or ultra wide band antenna then also uh, for a radar medical imaging applications then also you can improve the radiation the bidirectional radiation can be improved or modified using fss so now let us uh, go one by one some of the applications not in very very much detail but you can ask questions later on uh, otherwise i will not be going in much detail of this so this is one antenna we are using this is known as a printed antenna the general name is printed antenna but if you know if you ask me the specific name then it's known as slot antenna slot antenna is kind of antenna where you have a slot you can see this slot here so this slot is uh, made uh, on on a particular printed sur printed surface which is uh, using metal you can print it so on the whole metallic structure metallic surface you have a slot the slot is uh, you can see it's cubical um the square slot sorry so the square slot when you made so what happens is the slot radiates like a dipole so when the slot radiates like a dipole the radiation can be upside as well as some radiation can be down so if it happens then maybe you do not need the radiation that is going down that means in the in the direction below the antenna you do not need the radiation in some applications so what you can do is you can enhance the radiation above the antenna how you can do that for that we can design some fss structure but you need to know the antenna frequency antenna operating frequency if you if you know that then only you can do it so the antenna operating frequency here it can be around some 5 to 8 gigahertz so you can design the fss in that particular frequency band and then you can put it above the antenna here the fss you can see it is having three layers the upper one is the capacitive layer then the middle one uh, the middle one you can see it is a grid grid layer which is basically some inductive layer and the last one that is another capacitive patch layer so the patch layer is acting for capacitance and the grid layer is acting for some inductance so in this way you can have capacitance inductance capacitance that means clc structure so the clc if you put in some uh, units if in the in some circuit equivalent circuit then you can see that the c capacitors are on the ends and the inductor is in the middle and in between there are dielectric mediums because you can see there are two dielectric substrates the yellow ones 
So if there are two substrates, then you can model them using transmission line. If you remember in transmission line equivalent circuit, we have else uh, we have RLGC equivalent circuit of the transmission line. So if you consider that RLGC equivalent model, then in that we are uh, basically ignoring the conductance or this uh, resistance part. So we are concentrating only on LC. So it can be LC. So this LC is for the transmission line equivalent model. Then we can have another LC for the another dielectric structure. So this is the together this equivalent circuit. The advantage of plot, uh, plotting this equivalent circuit is if you know how to determine the inductor and capacitor values for this equivalent circuit, then you can model these FSS. Because as I told you, we have to design the FSS in five to eight gigahertz. Now, how to design that? By trial and error, all of uh, many of uh, you know the researchers go for this hit and trial method, but it's better to go for some method. So if you want to follow some method, then first of all, you get these equations of inductor and capacitors. Here you can see. And uh, in the right hand side, we have uh, certain parameters like the normalized loaded quality factor Q, uh, this uh, you know mutual coupling factor that is K. So these factors are there. Delta is the bandwidth you want, percentage bandwidth. Z is the impedance, uh, characteristic impedance. So all these parameters, if you put here, your desired parameters in the right hand side, you put them. Then you know the desired LC values. So with the desired parameters, you desired characteristics, you know the desired LC values. From the desired LC values, next you can determine the periodicity or the dimension of the unit cell. That means what should be the size of the unit cell? What should be the gap between the two unit cells? So these things you can determine here. This S is the gap between the two unit cells, and this P is the periodicity of the unit cells. So you can determine this particular things and uh, from there, from these LC values. So first you know the LC values, then you can determine the unit cell dimensions. With this, we can model the structure and uh, then we can simulate it. Because you know, but you cannot fabricate it every time. So first you have to simulate a couple of structures. You have to tune it, then you can go for the simulation. So these are the simulation results, the transmission coefficients or reflection coefficients. Mm, I'm not going into detail. The bandwidth, you can see it is 50%. That is adequate bandwidth we have. And it's a regard it refer, with reference to 3 dB transmission le, level, we have uh, measured this and carefully observe the, the, the phase response. The phase response, if you see, it's kind of linear. The phase is kind of linearly decreasing with frequency. And if you see the linearly decreasing response of the phase with frequency, this is having some effect on the antenna performance improvement. So this is a measurement process, the fabricated structure and the measurement process. Now, if you place this FSS above the antenna, then what will happen? The antenna is radiating both upward and downward. So if the antenna is radiating both upward and downward, then what will happen when the antenna is radiating upward, the, sorry, okay. The, when the antenna is radiating upward, it is, the, the signal is passing through the FSS and some kind of signal, some part of the signal, it is getting reflected by the ground plane and then again going upward. So some, 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 of the, some part of the signal is going straight through the FSS and some are getting reflected by the lower, lower part of the FSS and then again reflected by the ground plane and again going upward. So in this way, there are two signals. There are two particular, uh, two parts of this signal. And here you can see the reflection coefficient that is S11 for the antenna. You can see how even after placing the FSS, the S11 is uh, not changed. It's covering the five to eight gigahertz bandwidth. So it's covering this five gigahertz to eight gigahertz frequency band. But the problem, uh, you know, here it is uh, the matching, the impedance matching is, uh, you know, affected. That's going, the, it is going minus 10, above the minus 10 dB level. And then that is where you need to consider this fact. You know, impedance matching is I'm talking about the VSWR. So the VSWR is not two is to one because it's going above the minus 10 dB level. If that is so, then what is the problem? Whenever you go for some research work, you, you design your project, you go for some research work or you want to publish some paper in some journal, then always remember just designing and getting the proper result is not up to the mark. You have to go through the results carefully and if there is some minor change, then also do not get you know, uh, demotivated, 
always try to find out what is behind this, what, what is the reason behind your this degradation. If you can find out, if you can track it out, then that is the most important part about your work. That means then also your work can be published and it can be uh, received and uh, accepted by some channel. So you need to figure out the points, no, not just publishing the results. So here, you, if you want to um, uh, figure out this problem, why the impedance matching is disturbed, then it can be possibly due to the impedance loading. Loading means if you are placing the FSS above the antenna, then the antigens measure impedance matching is affected by the impedance of the FSS because every metallic structure, metal dielectric structure affects the impedance of the antenna. So the antenna impedance matching is getting affected and this is known as impedance loading, you can see here. And uh, we have uh, considered the result where the impedance matching is not much affected and that one we have simulated, uh, we have fabricated and measured. These are the radiation patterns you can see. These are probably your EMI band antenna lab. You can measure different antenna radiation patterns. So similarly, you can measure the, the radiation pattern for this antenna. But again, there is some disadvantage. That is, we are getting a very high cross pole level. You know, cross pole. If you uh, place two same antennas when with a 90 degree uh, uh, rotated, the receiver is receiver antenna is 90 degree rotated with respect to the transmitting antenna. Suppose dipole, then we have a cross polarization. So the cross polarization, you can see here, it is significant in the H plane or magnetic plane. So that also is happening due to the FSS. So you, if you place the FSS, you get some advantage and with, with some disadvantage also comes. Then we can uh, see another disadvantage that is in the gain enhancement. So the gain is somewhere enhanced, but somewhere it is degraded also. So that is basically happening because if you remember the FSS, uh, response then you can see that the transmission level is good in some frequencies but at some frequency the transmission level is going down so that is known as insertion loss below my zero db so this insertion loss is basically causing this uh, you know this change in gain that means the gain is not much enhanced here so this uh, we have already discussed and this is the these patterns, you know, these three patterns, the 3D plots uh, make you much more uh, visible, much more, uh, you know, easy to understand this particular mechanism where you can see at the first, the antenna was radiating equally in both the directions, but with the FSS, the antenna is radiating more in some direct, with more directivity, it is radiating in the up direction or broad side direction. And that is happening due to this particular phase. That is the linear, linear uh, decreasing, of the phase with frequency because the signal that is getting rotated inside that is having a linear increase linear uh, increase of phase with frequency but the phase of the fss is decreasing linearly with frequency so that is why they are getting um, cancelled by each other and you get a gain enhancement this is just one little bit modification for the fss structure if you increase induce some slot in the fss then what happens is you can have two transmission, more transmission poles. You know, previously we had two transmission poles. Now we have, previously we have these two transmission poles. Now we have three transmission poles due to this slot and one transmission zero. Transmission zero, the advantage is if you have a transmission zero in between transmission plots, then the advantage is you can distinguish between the different frequency bands. And that is very important. You know, if when you are listening to so, FM, that means, uh, you know, if you FM channels. So you tune the different channels, 98.3 megahertz, 106.2. So different frequency FM channels you are tuning from one FM channel to another FM channel. So if there is no gap between the two FM channels, if there is no, you know, transmission zero between two FM channels, then it is, it is difficult to distinguish between them. So always, whenever you design some filter, it is better if you have multiple bands, it's better to put some transmission zero it mean between the two uh, pass bands or band pass response. So here that is put by designing some modification, introducing some modification in the unit set, in the middle layer. So we have this equivalent circuit response using ADS, we, you can simulate it. And uh, ADS mostly used for high frequency circuits, equivalent circuits. So here you can see we have three LC, three different LC, L1, C1, L2, C2, and L3, C3. So if you have three LC, 
filter means you are having a third order band pass filter so from second order band pass filter we are going for the third order band pass filter just with the introduction of some slot in between mm, again uh, so these are basically when you work on this particular topic then as you work more you will be going in detail the angle incidence angle you can change the in for the impinging uh, emf this is something you can design the fss also for uh, the antennas uh, where you can put the fss below the antenna not above the antenna so the above the antenna you put the fss that is super straight below the antenna you put the fss it is substrate so you can use this as substrate also here we have a dual layer fss but the disadvantage is here you have a air gap between the two layers previously there was no air gap between the fss layers here we have some air gap what the air gap is doing is the air gap will introduce some wide band response here you can see one layer fs one fss layer is giving you a single pass band a stop sorry single stop band at 5.5 gigahertz a second layer is giving you two stop bands at 4.5 gigahertz and 6.5 gigahertz so if you merge them that is known as cascading you know you have heard the cascading this term so if you cascade them then what will happen is you have big, you have the all these three frequencies so it is kind of merging or cascading and here in the current surface current distribution in surface current which is ampere per meter that is very important in em theory also most of the time we go for surface current density instead of the current so this current density is you can see here for the first layer it is resonating only at uh, this around 5.5 gigahertz but the second layer is resonating and the loop in the second layer is resonating at 4.6 gigahertz and the inner structure is resonating at 6.5 gigahertz so this as you you know as i told you that as you work more on this you get to know about it. just i'm giving you some brief idea how to go go for how to achieve some different frequency responses so here you can see the two the cascaded response of the fss so it is there are three transmission zeros these are known as transmission zeros previously it was transmission poles for the band pass filter for band stop filter these are transmission zeros so you have more transmission zeros there means the roll off factor also improves okay so you can even have this this type of roll off factor so it is it can be much more improved this is the measurement process again and as i told you you can also use the vna that is the vector network analyzer in this figure you can see and uh, it's about its frequency range is up to 20 gigahertz and uh, we uh, we have measured in university of kalyani and there we got this response and i'm not going not going much in detail of this equivalent circuit again because as i told you that you can model the band stop fss or patch type fss with series lc as in the beginning of this presentation i told you that is l1 c1 series 1 then again one l2 c2 and l3 c3 that is for the second layer so for the top layer or first layer you can have l1 c1 for the first layer you can have this l1 c1 and for the second layer you can have this l2 c2 and l3 c3 because in the first layer you have only one patch with slot in the second layer you have one loop and one patch with slot so the outer loop very thin loop you can see here this loop is basically providing you the lower frequency and the middle uh, the slotted patch that is providing you the higher frequency so in this way you can get different frequencies so you can modify the unit cells and you can get the lc values from this uh, certain uh, para the equations that uh, can be taken from some pair a paper from some uh, reputed journal like ieee or so and you get this uh, values lc values may you know this uh, equivalent circuit response does not match the simulation uh, result uh, accurately but at least you can have some kind of similarity between them so in more ways you go for the simulation the equivalent circuit model measurement the more ways you involve you will be more sure about the results then we can put the structure below some antenna the same antenna i'm using here so that uh, you for your understanding so the same antenna we are using here and we are getting the gain enhancement with this particular mechanism mm, and here you can see the s11 or reflection coefficient of the antenna and the gain is getting enhanced this is the radiation pattern you can see for the antenna only 
you can uh, you can get the radiation in different directions more radiation in three different angles but with the fss you can see that the radiation is getting enhanced only in the broadside direction and the other directions the radiation is getting reduced so that can be uh, cleared from this radiation patterns e blend and h blend radiation patterns then we can have uh, every time you design some antenna and antenna with fss always go for the efficiency the radiation efficiency the aperture efficiency you can measure the efficiency also there is some very uh, well known processes amazing methods are there because you know the if the radiation is not efficient then even if the gain is very high it will not be you know of any use because the efficiency of the antenna should be so around at least 70% 80% radiation efficiency should be there but do not believe the simulators because the simulators will give you some efficiency of 98% 99% 95% so these efficiencies are uh, you know ridiculous because in practical you are not going to get that much efficiency for your antenna and the sub choosing the substrate is also very important as we are choosing the substrate of fr4 that is known as glass epoxy popularly so if our pore is having a dielectric constant or a relative permittivity of 4.4 that is not the issue the issue is the tan delta that is loss tangent if you are using some band pass fss response you want to get the band pass fss response this fr pore will give you a loss tangent of 0.02 so instead of that if you go for the arlon substrates then for the arlon substrates the epsilon r values can be different sometimes 3.5 1.3.2 2.7 so if it is arlon ad270 then the constant will be 2.7 but the most important thing is the tan delta loss tangent so you have studied i think that uh, loss tangent is basically deciding that how much loss will be incurred when the signals pass through it so if you are designing some fss on the arlon substrate then the insertion loss will be less compared to the fr4 case so the insertion loss is very important Uh, then you can see here the side this electric field distribution for the antenna in in the upward and downward direction both way you have the bidirectional radiation before the fss introduction with the introduction of the fss you can have the radiation enhanced in the upward direction and here again you can see that the reflection phase is reducing linearly approximately linearly with frequency so uh, it's better to use this uh, uh may i know how much time i am having sir it was a Hello. one hour uh, webinar so around 5 to 10 oh. minutes to sir okay so uh then we can have the uh, um, corner reflector antenna so that is basically some very simple monopole antenna you can choose dual band or single band and you can place the fss in the place of corner reflector so corner reflector the the this uh, concept is very old but in the in the with the fss use of corner reflector this is something new we can uh, use them so that the radiation of the monopole antenna it is omnidirectional but with the corner reflector you can have the radiation of the monopole antenna it at one frequency it will be uh, only directional at some other frequency it can be by it can be directional so you can control the you can play with the radiation pattern of the monopole antenna uh, this corner reflector how it works i'm not going into the detail you can uh, refer the balanis book for these things um, but uh, the main, the important thing is the electric field the electric field of the monopole antenna was you know in the range of some 97 or 78 volt, volt meter but once you the fss it goes uh, four times four folds due to the image theory that means with the fss it behaves like a corn metallic reflector at that frequency of resonance so you can have multiple images so uh, i think uh, instead of discussing all these things just uh, give you the brief how to use the corner reflector you can see here with the corner reflector at uh, at the frequency where the fss is band stop response fss is giving band stop filter response there you can have the directional radiation in some particular direction and where the antenna is working at sort around some 3 gigahertz frequency the fss is not active that is it is not uh, resonating there the antenna will radiate in all the directions equally 
so the antenna omnidirectional radiation will be you know it, it will be uh, restored so with the same antenna with the same structure you can get different radiation patterns without using any active element that is very important because with using active element you can uh, also get this response this is same kind of thing uh, just the use of another antenna that is known as dielectric resonator which is very much useful in specifically higher frequencies because in high frequency you know the antenna conductor sections are uh, um, giving some conductor loss the conduction conductor loss if you want to avoid then you can use dielectrics for antennas that is dielectric resonator antenna and you, you can go for this uh, and particular antenna you can you can do some research on this or you can do some project work on this because dielectric resonators are uh, you know nowadays they are being used frequently because at high frequencies the dielectric resonators do not give any conductor loss because it's made of dielectric only so here for this antenna we are using the dielectric resonator for 9 to 11 gigahertz you can you can see it's beyond even uh, some at the end of some x band uh, so for x band applications you can use dielectric resonators and the purpose is same that is we can get the radi we can get the omnidirectional radiation at some frequency and direction directional radiation at other frequencies but the fss here it is used it is designed on the carved surface or carved structure so that is the one interesting thing about it you can use some polymide material uh, for this purpose where the fss is made on you can see it is a it is a carved structure and then uh, at the last we have come to the last of this end of this presentation mostly so there we can um, use the fss also for some body wearable networks you know body wearable network is a hot topic in the field of iot that is internet of things iot this subject is uh, mostly uh, being studied in as elective courses in many of the institutions so you can also uh, try to get some get into touch in iot so in iot you can uh, concentrate on this body area network this this one part in iot uh, so there if you are uh, if you are in a remote village and you want to transmit some data such as the ecg this pulse uh, your pulse rate your heartbeat or you know this, uh, this some blood sugar level this very small small you know very basic uh, parameters of related to your health that you want to transmit to a remote center where the health healthcare professionals are being placed so they can monitor your health remotely and uh, if there is some emergency or some emergency is about to come then they can uh, they can make some management so that is basically you can save a lot of lives with that so with in that you have to put some antenna on your body that is on body or off body or in body there are different uh, things so here we have uh, got some button shaped antenna so the button the antenna shape or the dimension is on like a but just like a button you can see one rupee coin is there the, the size is same so it's uh, working at some 5.2 gigahertz ism band that is uh, used for ism band applications and if the antenna is radiating upward but with a very smaller gain very lower gain if you want to really increase the gain of the antenna so that it the signal reaches uh, long distance then you can put some fss on the antenna that is also in the shape of a button and you can increase the gain so for that we have this FSS structure and you can see you have a band pass FSS structure for this but uh, one thing you have to notice that the the material should be like a button so the material we are using here is uh, acrylic sheet which is having a dielectric constant of 2.8 and acrylic sheets the advantage is it is transparent so you can put any design and sometimes even you can choose some design so that the uh, transparency is kept so and also it is easily uh, achieved you, you can get this material easily in the market at a very low cost but you have to fabricate the structure on it with some glue because the acrylic seeds do not have any metal coating on it no metal plating is there on the acrylic seed so this uh, design is used for 5.2 gigahertz and uh, this can be used uh, in the in the coat uh, in place of a button and uh, it is not very easily detectable also so for for some secured applications also it can be used and this uh, this was presented in UCAP. So this is you can see with the FSS the the radiation is more in the upward direction in in the current distributions it is visible and the gain is also enhanced by some three to four dB. And also you can uh, use the FSS for some other application like when the antenna is radiating much more 
towards your body because the antenna can give some radiation towards your body so if you place the antenna on your body on on the jacket or on the shirt then maybe your body that particular part is getting affected the, the tissues are getting affected by the radiation because throughout the day you have to switch on the system and maybe the radiation is getting slowly affecting your 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 health so what you can do is if the if you can see the sar the specific absorption rate is more in that particular region so what you can do is you can place some fss uh, in between the antenna and the body and this body part so this fss what it will do is the radiation will be minimized towards the body because you know there is no use of the radiation towards body you have to radiate the signal outside the in the outside environment towards this direction so if you want to do that then you can simply place the fss behind the antenna there is there will be no problem and the advantage is the antenna radiation will be enhanced in the uh, out, out, in the outside direction so the first advantage is you are you are not getting affected by the radiation the second advantage is the radiation is enhanced in the other direction the gain is enhanced in the other direction broad side direction so that is how you can save yourself as well as the publication the purpose will be solved so here the radio, fss is reducing the radiation antenna back radiation by around 4 dB and we are using jeans as the substrate because you know jeans is mostly uh, all of you wear jeans so jeans material is very much user friendly and it's uh, flexible also and it's com it, uh, comfort is also good so we can use jeans material the stability constant was measured it is 1.6 for this particular jeans material and it will not uh, take much area here you can see with the fss the radiation is in reduced in the backward direction towards your body and it is enhanced in the upward direction so um so th that's we have come to the end uh, conclusion you know uh, for such kind of topic it's difficult to come to some conclusion but i can tell you that there are much more to uh, uh, work on this particular topic so you can take it, take this as project yeah if you want i can also help you if you have some doubts or queries in the future also mm, and uh, what are the scopes you know uh, not only gain and directivity or bandwidth uh, the fss can be used to play with the different antenna parameters such as you know so the radar cross section the polarization specifically you can use some fss that is uh, compatible with the circular polarization you can also reduce the effective dimension of the antenna uh, by using fss or this kind of array structure that is not known as fss that is known as meta surface so there are many such structures related to fss close to fss but not exactly fss their names are like meta materials meta surface kind of things are there and uh, so these parameters you can improve uh, with the help of antenna also uh, it can be used as a filter above the antenna so that will be antenna filter or field antenna so that also you can work on pfa antennas are used in mobile phone for the mobile phone applications you know inside your mobile phones these antennas are placed so they are also you can build some fss for that so that radiation is not uh, going inside your body much so th these things are uh, these scopes are there to work on mm -hmm. in future and that's it so i'm done now if you are having some query you can ask me uh rather we can discuss on this hello 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 yes ah uh, sir i have a query regarding the measurement setup you have shown yeah so i can go to the measurement yes sir setup. i think it's slide number 31 i think yeah here you can get the measurement setup yes sir sir i have a query that in this measurement setup there is no any quick chamber i have seen so it is is it possible to have a measurement without uh, that chamber yeah that's a very good question actually even i was having this doubt that whether we can get the measurement without any quick chamber because we uh, we could manage the any quick chamber only you know around 4 to 5 times beyond that we couldn't manage the anechoic chamber every time so if you measure the antenna with fss structure or only fss structure without anechoic chamber then you have to make sure certain things such as suppose you are using a high frequency 5 gigahertz 6 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz 10 gigahertz is, uh, you can say high frequency so the wavelength is very small 
around 30 mm yes sir. you have to make sure that the the different uh, you know obstacles or the different objects surrounding your measurement system such as almira you can see here some almira some computer some uh, you know all these are having conductors so you have to yes. make sure that they are much much uh, you know at a far distance from this particular measurement system or antenna or fss yes. that is compared to the wavelength the wavelength is 30 mm or 10 mm this distance from this and measurement system to that particular objects or obstacles should be much more much beyond that wavelength okay. should not should not be comparable to the wavelength or best is you go to yes, if you can you can take all these systems to rooftop or some open space then you will get the best result sir is it uh, safe to do such uh, experiment at high frequency in open space free space without uh, an echoic chamber yeah actually you know uh, in free space it's safe uh, uh, actually because whenever you are uh, measuring inside some room without an echoic chamber if you are measuring inside some room an echoic chamber you do not have to even go inside the chamber every time you can without being in the chamber also you can measure though that we do not do we go inside the chamber if the chamber is large but you can do without going into the chamber after setup you just come out that is also possible but you are if you do not have any quick chamber you are measuring inside a room then the problem is there will be multiple reflections from the walls and the obstacles so it will be you will be much more affected by the radiation but if you are doing in outside the room in open space then the radiation will be just go away they will not be reflected back by some obstacle and mostly the horn antenna if you are using they is so directly yes. so it will not uh, direct the radiation towards you until and unless you come in between the two horn antennas i think you do not have to come in, in between the two horn antennas yes, sir sir uh, i have another doubt on slide number 26 26 okay sir yes. yeah uh, sir uh, the equivalent parameters which are uh, calculated are they calculated using the formulas of c or l or you said that uh, you can use the simulation software ads so how so the, the manual tuning of uh, lnc is done or they have calculated analytically yeah so basically you know sometimes uh, you know some researchers what they do is they go for the softwares and they tune this lc values but uh, what i have done or uh, our group what we do is mostly we go for this uh, simulation then we know the dimension so we calculate the lc values from the formula but after yes. calculating the lc values from the formula you you find that uh, the the values are not exactly giving you the same response yes sir. so then what you can do you can fine tune the lc values accordingly okay. you can fine tune the dimensions because you know the the relation between the lc and the dimension so you can tune the lc values you can tune the dimensions and you can tune the simulation result also but at the beginning i suggest all of you to go for the formula itself okay so i have a last question uh, i have gone through your rt one of the article of conformal fss you have have i triple transaction on antenna wave propagation yeah. so there you have a simulation setup uh, two different simulation setup you have shown for uh, the planar fss and for the conformal fss so i'm asking for the conformal yeah. fss you have taken uh, a, a more number of unit cells for the, uh, the planar fss you have taken only single unit cell for the simulation so uh, the reason may be because if you if you conform a single unit cell it will not uh, replicate Uh, like a full conformal structure i think but how you have decided how many number of cells you have to be taken for the simulation for conformal fss yeah actually you know why when you are going for unit cell simulation we have to rely on the software because the software is simulating the infinite array but in practical in practical scenario we cannot make a infinite array we do not need infinite array so it's better every time you you decide the number of unit cells and separately simulate it as you can see in the middle figure we have mm -hmm. separate finite number of unit cells and you simulate it and then you simulate the same in uh, fss but in curved curved shape now mm -hmm. if your question is how do we decide the number of unit cells so here first of all if you see we have chosen the antenna the frequency mm -hmm. of the antenna the dimension of the antenna accordingly you have to choose the ground plane you can you can make a larger ground plane even larger but you know there is some some trade off or some limit so according to the ground plane you can choose the horizontal in the horizontal direction you can choose the number of unit cells that means in this direction you can choose the number of unit cells accordingly 
and if you go on increasing the number of unit cells then you will see that it is basically a half circle now if you go beyond half circle then what will happen then they do the unit cells in the in the end you can see the unit cell in the end or unit cell in this end they are not having any electric field or surface current i can show you here you can see that the unit cells that are at the end they are have they are not having much you know surface current most of the surface currents are on these unit cells only so that yes. is why you can choose uh, that you can decide the number of unit cells accordingly okay so thank you sir let's go my side Welcome, sir. Sir, I have one query that uh, if we design our own geometry of FSS, how we can, uh, we can make the equivalent model circuit, equivalent circuit model? Yeah, uh, mostly you can see here. I have uh, taken one minard cell. The minard cell was this minard unit cell. This was not there in the you know conventional unit cell uh, geometries. So there you can model it. You know, it it, it is basically this uh, this kind of uh, these parts are. be having like inductors and in between them this particular sections will be have some as um, like some capacitor so you can go for sir the approximate model you, know, you can you can you can approximate the any, model any but the problem i have also follow. faced during my research sir any reference book to follow Hello. because i am pursuing my phd yeah. on this so any reference book to follow for equations okay, okay. apart from markovic yeah apart yeah let, let me check uh, let me check uh, apart from sir markovitz equations markovitz wave guide equations which we follow for square loop uh, f no uh, actually there is a book on not on, exactly on fss but uh, you can follow that uh, that is i'm not yeah 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 this one you can follow this 19 okay sir thank you sir thank you sir Hello, sir. Yes. Hello. Sir, uh, there are some questions in the chat box. Also, uh, people wanted to ask from you. So please do check. Yes, uh, there is only one question uh, from Nandan Mittal. Uh, what is Ivanson field? So, I think Evans scan field is asking about yeah what is Evans scan field okay so basically you know whenever there is some antenna or some kind of radiator maybe uh, that is uh, you know in the range of two gigahertz three gigahertz or maybe in the terahertz frequency so whatever be the frequency whenever there is some radiator there will be near field there will be you know reactive near field then there will be far field or different fields are there if you are situating in the near field or very close to the antenna. then there are evans scan field for any source for any radiator but the problem with evans scan field is it doesn't go much beyond the antenna that means it will not be radiating so it's not used for radiation it cannot be you cannot say that whenever the antenna is radiating or you are getting some power from the radiation it's not the evans scan field evans scan field is something that gets radiated or that gets come, come to the end in the very close vicinity of the antenna Okay. Any more queries? Okay. Okay. Thanks a very lot for this wonderful and inspiring session, sir. Uh, feedback form yeah. is in the chat box, so please uh, copy it, uh, fill the form, or copy it for the uh, for filling it later. Uh, special thanks to uh, Dr. Koshik Datta, sir, for helping us contact I answer. Uh, also i would like to thank my colleagues for uh, arranging for this webinar and attendees for being part of this wonderful webinar have a nice day okay uh, thanks from the triple it dm uh, to the professor uh, dr ayan chatterji for becoming uh, this knowledgeable knowledgeful uh, lecture thank you all and even so, i'm also i'm, I'm also thankful to koshik and my friend and uh, uh
I know uh, we we are we are in touch uh, since our master degree and uh, uh, we are in touch nowadays also and it, it's very uh, not it's very good to share my experience whatever I have done with you with the students mainly because even I get to know a lot of things and some questions that I that I uh, can investigate in future so I'm also thankful to the student branch and uh, please keep doing such activities in future also thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.